Hey, this is a, an introductory exercise to learn uh, how Onshape works um, by walking through the creation of a relatively complex object that uses a variety of the different Onshape tools and concepts. So to start this, find the um, document Onshape Walkthrough, which uh, should be in your list of, of, of um, drawings when you log into Onshape. And uh, as soon as you get into uh, the open this drawing, go up to this men document menu that has the three uh, horizontal bars. Click on that and choose Copy Workspace. And uh, put your name on here, maybe your first name, and clean that up. We can take the word copy off of there. And uh, I'm going to actually name this version 2 because I've done this a couple times before. And this will give you your very own copy. Now I've already placed the um, the, the original uh, two-dimensional drawing from which we're going to create this three-dimensional model um, in the background. This is not typical, um, but I've done this uh, just to help you out. You can turn this on and off by coming over here to the features list. And when you mouse over the word graphic sketch, you can click this eyeball that appears and that will hide it. You'll see that when it's hidden, it's gray over here in the, in the features list and it disappears from the screen. When I mouse over it, I can see uh, some reference to what this feature um, is refers to on the screen. And uh, I can turn it back on by clicking the eyeball again. So you can use this, zoom in on this if you want to see any of the details. Now, one of the things before I hide this, I should do is decide just how am I going to approach drawing this object or modeling this object. And there's two um, logical ways to approach this. I could start from the back and um, start drawing the, the shapes that would appear like on the back plane and then extrude that forward. Or I could start from the bottom and extrude up. And the, for this particular object, it seems to me like it would be most logical to do it from the bottom. Uh, but you could do it either way. I'm going to start from the bottom and work up. And so I will hide this sketch. And the bottom plane would be on this horizontal plane, which is labeled top. So what I'm going to do is click on this to select it. And then I'm going to come up here and click sketch. And you'll notice that I get an, a new blue rectangle that appears here, which says sketch one. And that matches the name of this pop-up here, which also says sketch one. Now, this is the two dimensional plane that I'm going to start drawing on. And it would help if I could um, both be looking straight on at the plane and if I could hide these other planes um, for now. You can see them listed up here, top, front, and right side. And here's my sketch one feature showing up here. So to, hide, to uh, look straight on perpendicular at this plane um, is called looking normal to the plane. And the keyboard shortcut for that is just the letter N for normal. So I hit that. And now I'm looking normal to the plane, but I'd like to hide these other planes. That's just P for plane. So I toggle those off. Now I'm going to draw this object so that the very front of the object in the middle is lined up with this point here, which is the origin. So uh, you'll notice that these um, tools across the top here have changed. They are now tools that are appropriate for sketch mode, two dimensional drawing tools. I'm going to start with the rectangle here. And I'm going to position it over the origin and then move sideways. And you'll notice that I get a, a little dashed orange line that indicates, oh, you're right in line horizontally with the origin. And I'm going to click and then drag up. Now, I don't really care how far I drag uh, or um, that I keep this on the center of the line because I couldn't do that anyway. I'm just going to click. And you'll notice now that this box here has focus. There's a box around the number. There is no box around this number unless I mouse over it, All right? So uh, I'm going to type in what that dimension should be, which is 60 millimeters. 
and you'll notice pop, it pops to 60 millimeters and the other box now gets focus. That's 37 millimeters. All right. Now, I have the two sides um, defined, but you'll notice that the horizontal lines are black and the vertical lines are blue. Well, this means that the horizontal lines are defined is, or constrained. Um, they can really only appear in one place. Um, the problem is the endpoints of the line, which locate these two vertical lines, are not. So how did I constrain them? Well, I'm going to show the constraints. We don't typically do this, but unless we have a reason to, but uh, in this sketch uh, dialog box here, you see a show constraints um, option. I'm going to click that. And you'll notice that these little icons appear. So this icon is the most common. It's coincident constraint. Uh, and a coincident constraint means that uh, two features share a, a common point. That point is coincident to both of those points. So um, you'll see if I mouse over it, those two lines turn color, and that indicates which lines have a coincident point. And it's this corner point. It's in the same place. You'll see we have four of those constraints. We have a perpendicular constraint. When I mouse over that, I can see, oh, same two lines are perpendicular to each other. Here's a horizontal constraint, right, meaning that that line is horizontal. And um, same down here. Uh, and I have a parallel constraint showing that these two lines are parallel. And another parallel constraint here showing these two lines are parallel. So I can see everything about this rectangle is defined except for where these two vertical lines are actually located. I know how far apart they are, but I don't know where they are relative to the origin. So what I'm going to do now is to add that constraint. You can see on this menu here, this final option, this is the constraint menu. There's a drop down here. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to come down here to midpoint. So once I have that selected, you see it turns color up here, indicating I'm in the midpoint constraint. And so I'm going to click the line. I don't think it matters which order you do this on. But I'm going to click that line. And then I'm going to mouse over the origin so it's selected and click that. And you'll notice it moves over. And now I have a midpoint constraint. And everything turns black because it's fully defined. That's a good thing. We typically want things to be fully defined. All right, I'm going to turn the constraints off. All right, so that's an introduction to constraints. Now you'll notice that um, I, these uh, these features uh, do change color when I mouse over them, but I still have this crosshair cursor because Onshape leaves you typically in the last uh, command that you used. You can either click it again to turn it off or select a different option or hit the escape key or any keyboard shortcut. We'll deselect that. All right, so uh, I'm just going to move this a little farther away because I think we're going to have to make some changes in this. Now I'm going to um, next put in the, um, the these little notched corners and if you look at my original problem. It says that it is uh, it, there's a, a label on these. Let me just turn it on so it can show how you can do this. If I click that to show it again, there it is back there. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing. I don't want the graphics played. I want the graphic itself. Uh, so I have to find an orientation where I can actually see this. Okay, let's look at it from the front. You'll notice down here in the corner, it says five by 45 degrees. So this means five millimeters and a 45 degree angle, which means it'll be five millimeters from both of those. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my sketch N for normal. I'm going to hide the graphic sketch. No real reason to, but go ahead and do that. Oh, it's upside down because I'm looking at the bottom instead of the top. So that's easy enough to do. I can just rotate it around, then click on top. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to go up here now to the line tool. And I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to purposely draw it not the way it's going to be. All right. Just like that. And... Um, now, I have to tell it somehow that it's, I don't know how long it is, but how far it is from the corner. So I'm going to come up here to the dimension tool. And I add dimensions in order to, um, to do this. So I'm going to click here and click here. That distance is supposed to be five millimeters. So I'll say five. 
Okay, there's the five. Now, because it's a 45 degrees, it'll be five millimeters on both. So I could put five millimeters again here, or if I wanted to, I could just click this line and click this line and say, hmm, instead I'm gonna say it's 45 millimeters. All right, so either one of those would work fine. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave everything else the way it is. Now I could clean this up by trimming these off, but if I do that, I'll probably find that some of my constraints will break. Let's just see. If I do this and this, yeah, notice how it breaks these constraints because I've actually eliminated this point. So I don't think I'll bother doing that. I'm just gonna undo this. Undo that, undo that. You can also do Control Z as most Windows programs. Um, so uh, I'm just going to do it this way and leave it there. Now, it's going to help if I, um, instead of recreating that same feature on this side, if I uh, use what I've already created to, to mirror it on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, need a mirror line for that. And uh, to create a mirror line, which is not going to be a permanent part of the object, I'm going to use the construction feature. So here's the straight line tool, and here's the construction toggle. So when I click on this, it's just going to be a line that I'll be able to see, but it won't be really considered part of the object. And I'm going to come mouse over the origin, because that's the midpoint of the object. Come up here, click here. All right. And you'll notice that it's now a different, uh, it, it's not solid. It's uh, you've got long dashes and short dashes. That's how it indicates that's a construction line. Okay. Uh, so to mirror this particular feature, I come up here to the mirror tool, click on that, it says select a mirror line, that's the prompt, I'll click on that for the mirror line, select entities to be mirrored, just that one right there. Okay, and I'll click it again to turn it off. So now I don't have to do anything, it's already, it, it just shows up. Now also I start to get into the features of parametric modeling, which means that uh, that these uh, the, the dimensions and locations of these features are defined um, geometrically. And uh, you notice that I have a dimension here that says five. If I change this dimension and make it 10, for example, you'll notice that this side changes too because the program remembers that I based this as a mirror image on this. So if I change this one here, this one changes as well. Right. Now, sometimes that's not what you want, but usually it's a real time saver. Let's go back to five here. If you remember how you create and you think about these relationships as you create the object, that's a very hard thing for beginners to do. But um, as you get practice, you'll um, get better and better at that, typically. All right, so now I have uh, last things I have before I finish this sketch are some circles. So I'm going to come up here to the circle tool and I have one circle, it's a hole actually, that's right on this line. So I'll be sure I'm over that line when I do that. And if I look at my original problem, um, I can see that it says, and you can find this on your own, it says 3x and then a circle with a slash through it and 4. That's a dimension that's pointing to the the um, hole that's over here on the right. So what that means is there are three four millimeter diameter holes. Um, and uh, the, that circle with a slash through it is the symbol for diameter. The three X means I have three of them. So I just look for three holes that look like they're about the same size. And those are the ones that are gonna be four millimeters. So I'm gonna type in four because my diameter has focus. And now I have diameter four. Okay, that's good, except I asked, this is blue. Why is it blue? Because I haven't defined how far away from the origin that is. If I look at my problem sheet, I see it is six millimeters. So I will take the dimension tool, hit the center point of the circle, the origin, come over here, type six, and bingo it turns black, so it's located. Now I have these two uh, 
polls over here. By the way, unless it tells you otherwise, whenever you see a whole feature, assume that it goes all the way through. So I'm going to come up to the circle again. I'm going to put it up here. Now this time, I am not going to type in 4. Because what I would like is I would like it to be based on the size of this one. So I'm going to come up here to the constraint menu and choose an equal constraint. And I'll click on this circle. And now I'll click on this circle. And boom, you'll see now it's 4. All right. So if I change the original one here to 8, they both change. because they're based on each other. Now, it's blue because I haven't um, defined how far away from the origin it is, or the, either in the x or the y dimension. So if I look at my problem sheet, I can see that it's 22 millimeters up from the origin. So let me grab that dimension tool. I'll click on the origin. I'll click on the center. But it doesn't give me a vertical dimension. It gives me a horizontal dimension. I could change that by just moving over. You notice that depending on where it's located, it, I will um, get a, a different direction for the dimension. So I'll type 22. Now I don't really want this dimension to be way over here. So that now it's locked in place. I'll move it back over here. All right, now I also need to tell how far over it is from the origin. It doesn't tell me that. It does say that these are 48 millimeters apart. And I can tell from the way that that's dimensioned that it's symmetrical. So because they've actually drawn a center line uh, on the original problem. So if it's 20, uh, 48 millimeters from the other hole, it must be half that from the center. So that's 24. So I will click on the center of the circle, click on the origin again. Come up here, type 24, boom. All right, so that's where that hole is located. And now I can position the other hole using the mirror command again. So that's my mirror line. There we go. Okay, now I could have created the angle and this hole, and I could have created over on this side, and then mirrored both of them um, at the same time. But it's not really any advantage one way or the other. It doesn't actually remember these as if I had done them as three-dimensional objects. All right, it's fully constrained. It's fully defined. I will go ahead and click the check. So now I've completed that sketch. And uh, you can see it kind of shows up here as a flat plane. And I'm ready for the next step, which is to create the extrusion um, to bring that up. All right. Uh, so I'm going to come up here to the extrusion tool. Notice that this appeared next to the sketch tool. Also notice that when I mouse over a tool, I first get its name. And if I mouse over it for long enough, I'll get this tool tip that comes up and explains a little bit of help about the um, particular tool. It's a really good idea not to ignore these. At some point, you should read these um, because it'll, it may give you a little bit extra information about how that tool works. So I'll click on that. All right, now I'm in extrude mode. And it's asking me, you can see the blue area here, what faces or sketch regions do you want to extrude? I want to extrude just this face right here, not these corner faces, just this one. So I click on it. Now the default is always 25 millimeters, um, which is hardly ever what you want. Uh, if I look at the problem, I can see it's supposed to be four millimeters. So I'll type four here. Right. And blind is fine. New is fine. We will change these in uh, some future ones. Right. And there we go. Right. So I have the bottom part of this object. Notice that sketch one is now hidden. It assumes that I'm done with that. Now, I may not be. In fact, I'm not. I really want access to this um, center line that I drew without do redoing it. But I can turn it back on at any point just by clicking on it. And I can even go and edit it by double clicking on it. Okay, go, go back into sketch editing mode. And then everything that's based on that sketch will change if I change anything that's there. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is to draw this next feature 
which is the, the ridge that kind of goes through these holes. Um, so I want another sketch, but I don't want it down here. I want it now on the surface here that I just created. So I'll go sketch again. Now I can do this in any order, right? Before I selected the plane first and then sketch. Uh, this time I'm hitting sketch first and then clicking the plane. It doesn't matter which order you do it in. You notice since I didn't click a plane, this area in the sketch mode is uh, dialogue is uh, highlighted blue because it's expecting me to click the sketch plane. And I can't draw anything on it. None of these drawing tools are available until I do that. All right, so there we go. And it says sketch two. By the way, you can rename these sketches um, if, it, uh, if it will help you to keep track of which one is which. But you can easily see which sketch is which just by mousing over it in the feature list. Okay, so I wanna look normal to the plane again, and for normal. And uh, first thing I want to do is locate this line that goes in front of these holes. So I'll get the line tool. I'll mouse over here. I'm not really worried about where it is, but I do want to make sure, and it's kind of hard to see from the video, I'm sure, but uh, when I get horizontal, I can see the horizontal constraint icon appear, uh, and I can see that the line is a dashed, kind of yellow and blue alternating. So I'm going to come over to this side, coincident to this line, click. All right. Now, uh, the, the distance is already defined by it being coincident to these end lines on the left and right. But, whoop, hit the wrong key there. Hit the escape key to get out of that mode. Um, according to the problem doesn't really tell me exactly uh, per, uh, explicitly where that line is, but it says there's another line, which I don't want to draw yet, but it's going to be right here going across on the back side of these holes. And that line is 12 millimeters from the back. And then this line is six millimeters from that line. So I'll need to add those two together, 12 plus six to get 18. And that's the distance from the back edge that this is gonna be. So I'll take my dimension tool, click the back corner, click this corner, and type 12. Oh, that's wrong. It wasn't 12, it was 18. Also, now that I did that, I probably shouldn't have clicked on that corner because that corner is not going to be there. So let me do that over again. I'm just going to undo it twice here or three times. Uh, let me instead click the line itself and then the back line. Now you notice as soon as I click the line, I get this horizontal dimension. I'm not going to worry about it because when I click this back one, it changes. And now I'll make that 18. Okay, that's going to be better, I think, because now this goes to the midpoint instead of to the corner. Um, that would create a problem. I'm going to not do that yet because I'm going to do all these fillets at once. But uh, I'm going to draw now the vertical line that's here. And that one is tells me that it's eight millimeters from its sister line over on the other side. Um, that means that it's gonna be half that or four millimeters from there to the center. So let me go ahead and click the dimension tool, click on this line, click on the origin, and say that that's four millimeters. Okay. So, um, I am going to have a little bit of an issue. I think that in this case, rather than mirroring this line, well, I'll go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and mirror it. So obviously you can tell from the way I'm talking over this, that there are uh, always a variety of different ways that you can do something. You often have to make decisions about what approach you're going to take. Often there's not an advantage of doing it one way or the other. I'm going to show sketch one so I can see my mirror line. I'm going to go ahead and mirror 
oops, that's not the mirror line though. Try that again. This is the mirror line. And I'm going to mirror this onto this side. Okay. And I did that because what I want to do is I want to trim this line out from in between. That's going to um, keep me from having a problem when I make this curve in here. So I'll, the trim tool is these scissors here. I'm going to click that, just mouse over that, click, and trim that out. Okay. So now I'm going to make these little rounded corners. Now we call these fillets. It is spelled the same way that fillet is spelled, but we don't call them fillets because we don't work at McDonald's. We call them fillets because we are draftsmen, engineers. All right. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to click this. Ooh, I don't have a line here to fill it. Interesting, because this line is not really part of this sketch yet. So before I do that, I need to actually draw this line in. Now, there's two ways that I can do it. I can use the line that's already there, or I can draw a line over it. Now, if I use the line that's already there, I'm going to get this whole thing, which I don't really want. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, because it's so easy to do, I am going to just draw those lines in. Okay, so now it's hard to see, but you might notice that this line here is uh, is darker than this line down here. Um, but the the lines exist over each other, so which one I get will kind of depend on where my mouse is coming from. See, now I have just this line highlighted, but if I move over a little bit, I get the whole thing highlighted. That's just something you get used to in on shape. So I'm going to click the fillet tool sketch fillet tool because there's a three-dimensional fillet tool click that line now it highlights that line and notice that it appears up here which is kind of an awkward place it also says r5 and if i zoom in on it i can see that i'm getting this fillet appearing right here i don't want radius 5 i want radius 2 because that's what my problem sheet tells me and boom it becomes radius 2 kind of hard to see but it's also trimmed off the edges of the of this corner all right so now what i'm going to do now i've defined that as radius two i'm just going to go around oh apparently i don't have a line here either so i've got a little bit more work to do draw a line between those two points and now i can click this line and this line and they will fill it notice that it stays radius two. And I can either hit enter, or you can see that little icon that um, appears that's supposed to indicate, click the left mouse button. Okay, so there's my two millimeter fillet. I'm just gonna keep going around and adding my two millimeter fillets. Okay, now, I am going to change that. Now, another approach I could have done would be, because you notice these don't appear everywhere. Um, if I had added these all at the same time, they would have been all based on the very first one. Now they're actually based on two different ones. That's not really an issue for me here, but it's something that I'd want to think about. Generally speaking, I like to have everything get set up ahead of time so that I can just go around and add all the fillets at the same time. Then if I change one, they'll all change. All right, now the other ones that I have are here, but this isn't a, oops, I didn't select it there. There we go. So uh, you can see that this is wants it to be two millimeters but I don't want it to be two millimeters. I want these ones to be six millimeters, much bigger, okay? And I will do the same thing over here. Sometimes it doesn't select the first time. There we go, all right? And you notice this one is now based on this one. So if I change this to four millimeters, they both change but not my two millimeter ones, because they're not based on these. All right, I believe that is all I need for this sketch. So I'll go ahead and click that. 
Okay. And now I'm going to extrude this section. Extrude. I click the extrude button. I click the surface I want to extrude. Then I come up here where it says depth and type the amount. Now it doesn't tell me the amount, but it does say that it's 11 millimeters up from the base. And this one was four millimeters up. So I just have to subtract the two and get seven millimeters. And that's what this is gonna be, seven millimeters. Oh, looks better. And notice, this is important, add. It is not new. If I have new selected, it will be a not become part of this bottom extrusion. It will be a new part. And I don't want a new part. I want to add, which is the default, right? You notice now it's the same color. Click that. And now I'm up this far. All right, so now I have this back edge. And again, I could go from the, I could draw this from the back forward. But I'm just going to keep going up, and then I'll get that other those other features in. Um, so I'm going to do this in the opposite order now. I'll select this and then hit sketch just to show that it doesn't really matter which order I select those in. I do have to select the plane, though, before I can start drawing. And for normal. And for this one, this is really easy. All I'm going to draw is one line across the back. But, you know what, I should have done that as a rectangle. Now I have to draw around. I do need those lines too. Okay. So I want to tell how far that is from the back. 12. So click this line. Click this line. Come over here. Type 12. Oops. Didn't like that. Sketch could not be solved. Okay, let's go back. Let me do this all over again. I think this time I'll do it as a rectangle because that's what it is anyway. All right, I'll leave that 60. Click over here. Oops. Lost it. That's better. It like that. Okay. So two different ways around the barn. Go ahead and finish that. Now I'm going to do an extrude again. And to get the total amount, I have to subtract the 11 I already came up with from 44, which is the total height. That gives me 33. Click on this surface that's what i'm going to extrude up change the 25 to 33 and that's all i need to do now you might say well wait a minute what about those two corners at the top well that's pretty easy actually to put those back in let me uh move down here we can use a three-dimensional fillet right to put those in so this one works a little bit differently. What I want to do is I want to um, click the, the line that I want to actually be the fillet, right? And notice that it says five millimeters. I'm going to make this two millimeters. And I'm also going to click the other line too at the same time so that both of these are part of that fillet. Right? This little arrow points the direction the fillet's going. There's only one option here, so that's fine. And you'll notice that the uh, lines that I picked show up here as edges. Boom, there's those two fillets. Now I've got this cutout in here, and I've got a hole that goes through. So there's a, a couple of parts to this. There's a, a, a kind of a profile that appears up here. Um, and then there are the two lines that come down and the curve and the other line. And there's a circle in, in the middle. I think what will be best is if I create a sketch on this plane 
and then um, draw those, the hole and that shape first. So I'll click the plane, click sketch, go normal to the plane. And the first thing I'm going to do is draw the circle. So I'll click on the circle. And notice um, I want, this is right in the middle. So I'm going to mouse over the origin just to, so I can be on it and come directly above it. So I have a vertical constraint. And I'm going to draw the hole first. So the hole is diameter 10. So I'll type in 10. All right. Now it's blue because I haven't said how high up it is yet. All right. So according to my drawing, it is the center of the hole is 16 and a half millimeters down from the top. So get the dimension tool, which is a shortcut is D for dimension, by the way. Click there and type 16. All right. Now I've got this uh, arc that goes around. And up here there's an arc tool, but the default is a three-point arc. I'm going to come down hit that little arrow next to it and come down to center point arc. And now I can put in the center point right here. And then I'll come over sideways. Now, if I come over exactly sideways, you can see when I'm lined up with the center, it turns color. So I'm going to click over here where I'm right in line with it and then draw around to here again till I'm right in line. Now, the only thing I left to constrain that is the radius now with a complete circle i typically need to dimension it by diameter but a partial circle is dimensioned by radius which is half the diameter so this is radius 10 which means it's twice as large a curve as this diameter 10. Now i'm going to deselect that tool and then drag this down here, get it out of the way. And the last thing I have to do is to draw these two lines up. This time I'm not going to bother to mirror it. I'm just going to draw it up like that. Okay. So I'm done with this sketch. Now, the hole is punched all the way through. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to do it as an extrude, not as a hole. Um, I could do it as a hole, but I, there's not really any point in this um, drawing to do that. So I'm going to hit extrude. Now this time, it's, I'll, I'll select this afterwards, but what I'm going to want to do is remove, not make it new or added. And I'm going to click on the region. Notice it defaults to adding this in as a kind of a cylinder. If I click on remove, it reverses it. Now I don't really need to do this a particular distance. What I'll just say is through all, right? And that will just run it through to the other edge of the object. Oh, now I have my hole. But sketch four disappeared. I need sketch four, so I'm going to turn it back on. By the way, Notice I still have sketch one on. I don't need that anymore, so I'll click that off. Actually, you know what? I do need it. <laughs> Leave it back on. Okay, so uh, now I want to do another sketch on the top of this little dovetail arrangement. And you'll notice that it's going to start right at the corner here, kind of go back here, go across, and come back in. All right, so, um, and I only actually want to draw half of it doesn't really matter which half I draw. So I'm going to create a new sketch on this plane. Do it in that order this time. And um, I'm going to draw a line. Now, where do I draw the line? I can hardly see it here, but there's a point right there. And I'm going to click on that. I, I left myself at an angle on purpose here. Again, I'm not going to try and match the angle. I'm just going to do it at an angle, All right? And then I'm going to come back over here and I want to be right in line. This time now I do want to look straight down, so I'll hit normal. And I want to come over to this line, but stay horizontal. Boom. All right. I'm going to come out to the face 
and over here, all right? And as soon as I hit the start point, the line tool ends. I said line tool doesn't end, but that chain of lines ends. All right, so I do have to define a couple of things here. I need to define the distance that this is from here. So I'll get the dimension tool, click here, click this line, and now it's a vertical distance. So I'll click here, and according to my sheet, it is three millimeters. Now the other thing is this line here. It's still blue because I haven't defined the angle, which is supposed to be 60 degrees. So with the dimension tool selected, if I click this line and click this line, it changes to an angular dimension. I can type 60. All right, there's my 60 degrees. All right, I'm done with this sketch. Now, I'm going to do some, use something called a sweep to take this shape and follow these lines around and sweep out this um, section, which is gonna be removed. So the sweep is this one right here. So I'll click sweep and it says, what do you want to um, have to be the region for the sweep? I want this shape that I just collected, selected. And what path? I'm just gonna click that. Oops, I you know what? <laughs> I, it was still selecting faces, so it thinks it wants to include this face in the sweep. I don't, but I can easily remove it by clicking the X right there. Instead, I want to click down here where it says sweep path, and now define that. And you can see, oh, it's adding material. Mm, that's not what I want to do. I want it to remove material. All right, and now I can go back to adding the sweep path. Notice now it sweeps around here. Boom, now it's up there, I'm done. There's the sweep and you can see it's got this dovetail that comes right around like that. Okay, I'm gonna go to isometric view here. Woo. Turn off my sketch one and I believe, oh, I'm gonna turn off sketch four to, or yeah, sketch four, I'm done. All right. Now. Relatively complex object, um, but you'll notice that um, the uh, you know some of these sketches and things um, and extrudes they're kind of generically named. Uh, if and many um, objects, many models, you'd want to actually name those. You can do that, uh, like this extrude. Come down here. This extrude right here. Uh, is the very bottom one here, right? So if I double click on it, you can see it shows me that. I can go in and change those at any time if I need to change this, the height of that, for example. But if I wanted to rename it, I just right click on it and choose rename. And maybe I'll call this base extrude. All right. So, uh, and this this sweep, for example, was a, the dovetail sweep. I might rename this. Now, you, you won't always do this, um, but you'll notice uh, that uh, on, on professional models, they will often do that because if you're working on this with somebody else, it's tedious for them to be going through. Uh, so you could have you know, dozens of these different features that... Um, you would have to go through to find one that you're looking for. And um, it, it helps to define those by the vocabulary. So uh, just a that's how you do it. You just right click on it and change the name. You can do the same thing with parts, right? I rename that. I can call it uh, bracket maybe. And you can also do that with these tabs down here, which we don't need to look at right now. Okay. so. A lot of new material there, but uh, hopefully th this gave you an understanding of how you can get started with Onshape.